Hello and welcome to a millinery hat pricing video. My name is Ilona, I'm a milliner based in London and today I will be looking at hat pricing. I guess an alternative title to this video is Why are hats so expensive? I will be talking about numbers, costs and spreadsheets. If you are uncomfortable with numbers, please don't click away and know that I myself struggle greatly. And because of this, I will go slowly. And if you have any questions, leave me a comment down below. I might also do a live stream on this topic if there is enough demand. So don't forget to like, comment and subscribe as all these actions help me keep the art of millinery alive and safe from the endangered crafts list. Now, let's get those calculators out and get started. A couple of disclaimers. I am not an accountant or a financial advisor. This is not a financial advice video. This is just an example of how one might calculate the cost of a hat. And to that effect, for legal reasons, I will not be showing you my actual spreadsheets and numbers, but I have created some dummy spreadsheets and I will be using representative numbers. We're going to dive straight in and have a look at the three main spreadsheets that you will have to have set up. First, we've got a list of suppliers, then some separate hat costings, and then an aggregate hat costings. And I will be going through what all of these are throughout the rest of the video. Let's have a look at the supplier spreadsheet. What this is, is this is my master spreadsheet of all of the supplies that I buy in. I need this spreadsheet to keep track of how much a certain material costs and what's the minimum order quantities or what are this season's preferred colors, just general notes like that. So I have a name of the material, the name of the supplier, the link to the product, the cost per one unit and then the area in centimetre squared of how much of that product you might get. If it's not an area then I tend to list it as just a measure or a length like for one metre of ribbon. I want to take you through how I would input information into this kind of spreadsheet. So I've got here a product. This is the two colour woven bundle straw mat from the trimming company. So, the cost of it is £16 for one. Let me get the calculator out because that's £16 with tax added onto it. And for the purposes of the spreadsheet, I want to take off all the tax because what I'm going to do is at the end of the process, add all the tax back in. So, we do 16 the tax rate in the UK is VAT at 20%, so we go divided by 1.2, that gives us 13.34, I will call that, for one bundle mat. So let's put that price back in, 13.34, and this is a number because you can only buy it in ones or twos. The link to the product. The name of the supplier. Um, details this season, green has been very in, so we'll just write green. And then the name of the product, Buntle Straw. Now let's move on to the separate hat costings. What do I mean by separate hat costings? That is a spreadsheet that you would compile per hat that you make. So for example, this hat on my head, this is my bumper berry model, so in my directory of hat costings documents I have a separate spreadsheet that is called bumper berry. Today I'm not going to be showing you the costings for exactly hats that I already have made. These are just some made up hats. I've created a spreadsheet here called feathered berry. What you are going to want to do is link your two spreadsheets together. So you're going to create a link from the supplier spreadsheet to the separate hat cost spreadsheet, in this case, the feather berry. For this, I need to put in a formula. Equals import range, that's this one. 
and then it tells you, so this is Google Sheets, this is very useful because it gives you clues as to how to input the information, so I need the spreadsheet URL. So I just go over to this other one and I copy the spreadsheet URL. You've got to put in the name of the actual sheet, which is in speech marks, supplies, exclamation mark, and then the range. So it was A39, I think. If that's wrong, we can always change it to F39. Let's see, has that worked? Oh, it's giving me an error. What have I done wrong? Oh, I know what I've done wrong. I forgot to put in some speech marks around the link. There we go. And it's given me an error. That error is okay. I just need to allow access. And there it is. The information magically appears. Now all I need to do is add in more of this information. Firstly, I probably want this up at the top because we're starting with the base. And then if I just click the edge and drag down, it copies it. And then all you need to do is just change the numbers over here and you can cross-reference any row you like. So let's have a look at what um, the next supply will be, which will be wire. Because once we've blocked a shape, we need to wire it. And that is row 21. So we just change the numbers up here to 21 and 21. There it is. Uh, after the wire, we've actually got feathers. Let's say we're using this iridescent bronze cock feather fringe like we did in my vintage vampire goth video. So that's line 34. Oh, a lining fabric, so that'll be a silk. Oh, there's a silk dupe on line right here, number 35. And then label 36, and then we just need to find a comb. There it is, number 13. Okay, we've got all of those numbers. What do we do? So we need to figure out the cost per area used. Um, you don't necessarily have to do that. Um, sometimes you might just wanna price everything by the meter because that's the minimum you can buy. But if you're making a lot of hats and you buy ribbon on a whole roll or wire as a whole roll and you're not purchasing it by the meter, you might as well divide that whole amount by the amount that you are using. The twisted paper cap, well that's just one, so we can do equals cost per one unit. The millinery wire, that's the cost per one unit, which is one meter. Now for my feathered beret, let's say it's 60 centimeters in circumference, so that would be, I would need 60 centimeters of wire plus a five millimeter overlap for a join, so that's 65 centimeters. So we need to do a formula, which would be the cost per one unit times 0.65. And you can format the cells so that they automatically display numbers in a pound or whatever currency you're using. So you would just select the whole thing and click this format as currency button. Next, the feathers. It is probably about a whole meter of fringe per one feathered berry. So that'll just be the entirety of that number. Oh, this is going to be an expensive hat. Silk Dupion, that is the cost for one meter. You could either calculate the exact area of what you've used, or you can estimate and say, from about a meter of fabric for a lining, I've probably only used about one sixth comb, only one comb and the label, just one label. Ooh, we haven't put in a ribbon, so let's just right click on a cell, insert row above, drag that corner bit down, and find where the Petersham ribbon is. The shortcut for finding something in a spreadsheet, by the way, is Control or Command F. That's a one centimeter ribbon. I wonder if I've got a 1.5 centimeter. There it is, row 37. Since we've used about 65 centimeters of wire, we're probably going to use about the same amount of ribbon. So all I need to do is just drag that formula down and it will copy it down with the correct values. Then we need to know the sum of all of these materials. That's easy. There's a little function button over here. Click that, click sum. 
and it will ask you what values and you just click and drag, select them all, there they are. £41.99p without tax for the materials. Another thing I like to put into these spreadsheets is the amount of time it took to complete each step. These are just estimations, everyone's timings will be different and it's quite useful to time yourself when you're doing things. The more you do something, the more you'll know, oh, it takes me 20 minutes to block a hat or it takes me 20 minutes to wire a hat. Let's say the blocking took me 30 minutes because I'm not too confident with blocking paper. Then let's say the wiring took me 20 minutes and then with sewing in the ribbon, let's say that was a little bit trickier and it took me 30 minutes. Sticking on the feathers, oh, that's a lot of work. Let's say the feathers for a beret took me a whole three hours. I'm going to input this number in minutes and that would be three times 60, 180. Sewing in the lining, now let's say I hate linings, so I'm very slow at them. So let's say the lining took me 40 whole minutes. If it was a gathered lining, maybe only 20 minutes. And finishing, finishing just means sewing in the comb and the label, that shouldn't take longer than about 10 minutes. And once again, let's do the sum of all of that. 290, now that's the time in minutes. That's one spreadsheet done. The good news is, is that once you've made one spreadsheet of this kind of singular separate hat costing, you can just copy it and reuse it and all that complicated import range linking thing, it's already done for you. You've just got to put in slightly different spreadsheets and it, it will all work out, trust me. So, right click, make a copy. I'm going to open this copy and the first thing I'm going to do is rename it so I don't get confused. So let's call it 2B, just for the purposes of today, and we will call it Velvet with Self Bow. Now you've got this problem here again, and this is why I really like Google Sheets for this kind of thing. It tells you what the problem is. It tells you, you need to connect these sheets. So all I need to do is click Allow Access, and suddenly it's got all that information again. Instead of deleting all of these rows, I'm just going to once again change the numbers in the top like we started doing for all the copies of the Feathered Berry earlier for Buckram. Number 15. We definitely don't need to use a whole meter of Buckram. I know that a one meter of Buckram sheet divides into about six pillboxes. This is all estimates. Right, millinery wire, 57 centimeters. Petersham ribbon, it would be the same amount. Velvet. And I know that this is the cost for half a meter of velvet, so let's say we've used a third of that. So we've got to do the exact same thing we did before. Silk Dupion, I guess we are using Silk Dupion because it's for the lining and this time we'll divide it by six. Or as I've already said, you could literally calculate the exact area in square centimeters and figure out how that relates to the cost of the whole thing. And we'll just do the total sum again. And then let's change this timing chart a little bit. So we've got the blocking, we've got the wiring, then we cover it with velvet. Then we need to make the velvet bow. Then we've got lining. And then we've got the finishing. Yep, so blocking, 20 minutes. Wire, 30 minutes. Velvet, 40 minutes, because stretching velvet can be quite a laborious task. Velvet bow, 40 minutes per velvet bow. Lining, if we do a tip and side band, let's say 60 minutes, just to prolong this process. And we, we can play around with the timings later and see how your timing will affect the cost of a hat. Finishing, that's easy, it's only about 10 minutes. And of course that's kept our formula, so that's been 200 minutes to make a velvet pillbox with a velvet bow. The aggregate hat costing spreadsheet is where you can start playing with all the numbers and all the variables. So what we're going to do is link the separate hat costs 
all into this one master spreadsheet and this will be the way to keep track of all the hats from a specific season, collection, year, however you want to organise it. I like to organise my spreadsheets by the year, so down here I've called the sheet 2022. So I've got up here Feathered Berry, which is the names, and let's start linking the sheets. So I've already got the import range formula here. Once again, we'll need to allow access. And it's blank. That's because we need to make sure that the cell reference numbers up here match this one here. So that's J10. Let's pop the hours over here, just so that we don't have to link it. I'm just going to copy and paste the number in. 290 minutes, and we do kind of want it in hours, so let's do equals 290 divided by 60, which will give us the time in hours. Get rid of all those decimal points. It's much easier with a smaller amount of numbers in the cells. Before I carry on linking everything else, let's have a look at some of these other numbers that I've got listed here in the side. Image, that's pretty self-explanatory. I don't have images for these hats because they are not yet created. If you're a visual person, putting some pictures into your spreadsheets will probably help you navigate them a little bit more because you'll be able to instantly see the picture of a hat and then have all your associations with that hat come to the forefront of your mind. Next, hours. We've already dealt with that one. Hours times wage. The wage is the amount of money you would like to pay yourself per hour. There's many different ways to calculate that. You can have a look at the city where you live and whether that city has either a minimum wage or a living wage. So I live in London. There is a nationwide UK minimum wage, but I don't think that's a fair amount to pay myself. I think it's fair to pay myself the London living wage because that's where I live. The other way to calculate it would be to think to yourself, how many hours a week do I work? And what do I want my yearly salary to be? And then do a calculation based on that and see how much an hour of your time needs to be paid if you are wanting to achieve a specific salary goal. The other way is to just find an arbitrary number. Let's say I want to pay myself 15 pounds an hour. The calculation here would be equals hours times 15 pounds an hour. That means that the cost of making this hat for my time has been £72.50. The materials are £41.99p. Auxiliary. Auxiliary is anything extra that you might need to make this hat, be that you might want to order in some extra supplies, so you've got to pay the postage and packing for that, or maybe you've got to go out and buy some thread, it will be that. Once again, you can pluck that number out of thin air. Sometimes what I like to do is have a look at all the different suppliers that I order from and take an average of the postage costs for ordering from those suppliers. So let's say that's about £7.50, just for the sake of this example. Once again, that's a number I'm just plucking out of thin air. Overhead. Overhead is something very specific for tax purposes and I've already said I am not an accountant, this is not financial advice, I'm not quite sure how you calculate an overhead. Sum, that's easy, we do the whole, oh look, it's Google Spreadsheets has guessed that I want to do a sum of the above, that's handy. The next number, retail percentage. This is a funny number because <laughs> It's also kind of just plucked out of thin air. What we've done so far, this sum over here, the 127 pounds, 82 pence, that's the wholesale price. But if you are selling directly through yourself, so not to another business, but you're selling business to customer, you are the business and let's say Susan, who's going to the races next year, is your customer. So how much is Susan going to pay? Somewhere like a department store might put on a retail value of anywhere between 100% upwards. So in effect, it doubles the price. You can decide whether you want to set your retail percentage as low as 10%, 20%, 40%, 50% equals 
the number above times 1.5. There it is. Before you think this is the end, there's also taxes involved. So, once again, I'm not an accountant. This is not tax advice. Tax is going to be different in all different countries. In the UK, VAT is a value added tax, so I need to do this retail value times 1.2, that's adding on a tax of 20%. So the final cost of my feathered beret is £230.08. That's a bit of a funny number with 8p on the end. The best thing to do is to create this as a formula known as rounding up. So we go equals, round up, there it is, suggesting formulas again, and then we'll do what we just did, times 1.2. There it is, 231 pounds. Let's just quickly format that into pounds. And that's your feather berry costed. Like we did with all the other spreadsheets, I'm going to drag all those formulas across. Select all of this, get that little square, and click and drag. Let's do it across just to one. And now we need to relink the spreadsheets and change the hours, so we might as well get rid of some of this information. Materials, that's the main one. So this is the silk velvet with self bow. Grab this URL, copy it, paste it in. Oh, it's gonna tell me to link it again. And it's empty, that's because it wants this number, which is J11. And if we keep all the other values the same, all these other formulas are already done for us. We've just got to put in our time that we spent making this hat, which is 200 minutes. Let's turn that into hours. And it's already saved that our wage is 15 pounds an hour. So the final cost of the silk velvet pillbox with bow is 130 pounds. Once you've set up your spreadsheets, and you've done this for a couple of hats, costing other hats further down the line becomes so much simpler and so much faster. Let's play with some numbers now. So, let's see how the cost of a hat is affected if you gave yourself a pay rise. Let's say I'm now paying myself 20 pounds an hour. So the feathered berry now costs 274 pounds. And let's say that I am a department store manager and I am setting the retail for these to be 200%, so I'm going to times it by two. That makes my feathered berry cost 365 pounds, which I guess is about the amount you would expect to pay in a, in a department store. Let's say I'm a really greedy shop manager and I'm actually going to increase that price by tripling it. So now the beret costs 548 pounds. Wowie. On the silk velvet pillbox, let's change the wage to what I think is the actual London living wage at the moment, which I think is £11.50. I might be wrong on this one. That's going to bring the price down to £109. So maybe if you are a student, that's a good place to start, just straight up minimum wage. We are of course going through a time of increasing inflation. So maybe let's say I want to increase my wage by the London living wage, plus the amount of inflation. What's the amount of inflation today? It's probably about 10%. So let's say that's 11 pounds 50 times, what did I say it was about 10%? So 1.1, that gives me a wage of 12.65. So let's put in 12.65, there it is. So with London living wage plus inflation at the moment, it's 115 pounds for the silk velvet pillbox with the self bow. And we've already played with the fur felt beret and the wool felt beret. I hope that wasn't too fast, too much, and too many numbers. 
After all this, you might say to me, but Ilona, all these spreadsheets are too much for me. Is there an easier way? And the answer is, is there is no definitive method in how you choose to price your work. You could, for example, create some price bands. You could tie your price bands to your hat styles. For example, a brimmed wool felt hat will be in price band A, but a very different straw halo design will be in a price band B, and then a super fancy ascot hat might be in band C. And then every subsequent hat you make, you can put into that category and price it the same as all the other hats in that category. Another method is to look at how other milliners who you think match your level of craftsmanship price their work. Have a look at a hat you have made. Do you think it could be sold in a department store? Or is it more suited to be in a one-off fashion boutique? Or perhaps it's best suited to a market store? What kind of prices do those hats sold in these locations go for? Once you've done all this research, you'll have your answers. Now that we've priced some hats, I'd like to end on some advice. Don't undersell your work. This means value your time and experience and price it accordingly. The flip side of this is don't overprice your work for the sake of calling it couture. Also, please don't undercut other milliners or copy their designs and sell them as your own. It's not okay to do that. I am sure you are creative enough to make your own original work. And remember, a hat is only worth one hat. Thank you so much for watching, liking and subscribing. All those actions and comments help me grow, spread the joys of millinery and keep this art form from falling onto the endangered crafts list. You can find all my socials right here. Your support means so much to me. See you next time. Bye.